your solar thermal energy storage system. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, I want to thank the organizers uh, to let me to present this uh, research work about molecular solar thermal energy storage systems. This research topic uh, is developed in Casper Mold Pulsing Research Group at uh, Chalmers University in Sweden. But first, before talking about this topic, it's important to know why is uh, we need to uh, storage energy. As we know, there are different kind of, are currently different kind of technology to get a sustainable kind, a different kind of energy, like up solar panels or wind turbines to get electricity. But what happens when uh, we, uh, we don't, the sun doesn't shine or the wind doesn't blow? So we need to be able to store energy. In addition with that, in Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, the energy consumption in Europe, uh, almost the 48% of uh, industry and high residents uh, use is in a heat way. So in industry, it's three quarters of industrial energy is required this way, uh, form, form of energy and temperature around 150 degrees. One of the main source of this uh, heat way is the uh, fossil fuels, but we need to find other uh, strategies to get a uh, storage this kind of energy and release directly heat. There are different kind of chemical uh, energy storage. Sorry. Yeah, energy storage, like a water splitting artificial photosynthesis, but now I'm going to talk to molecular solar thermal storage energy where we used one molecule in presence of solar light to produce other molecule to storage energy uh, as a, a heat way. The idea to the, uh, create this kind of system is to use the parent molecule that in presence of solar light can photosummarize, I mean produce other kind of molecule and we can storage it. Uh, uh, we can storage that molecule and when we need heat, this can convert to the parent molecule and release the energy. This approach has potential advantage because it can be like a closed system, like we can uh, have like a possibility to have a high energy densities, long term storage, no isolation of materials and we don't need like a solar concentrator. Uh, but we need to think about what kind of molecule we should use for this uh, strategy. One of these kind of molecule is molecular photoswitch. The molecular photoswitch, uh, common molecular photoswitch is, there are like a few kind of examples, like uh, some and scenes, where uh, the isomer or the geometrical isomerization of this structure in presence of light, yes, uh, can be converted again just uh, in presence of heat. There are like some examples like that or uh, metallic complexes, like a can I summarize and again go back to the initial structure. In this, in this project, we are focused on just in MBD systems. It's like a, a bicycle compound, it's like a really strained molecule that in presence of a sunlight, can, we can get like a quadricycline systems. Uh, this approach, basically, uh, we can uh, excite the molecule to the parent, parent molecule in transition state and can convert to the photoisomer. This photoisomer is really strained and is non-stable in comparison with the parent molecule, so can go back to the um, starting structure and in this way we can get heat again or release heat. But using this approach, we need to uh, uh, optimize different kind of conditions. We call multidimensional optimization problems. The first one is photochemistry. We need to be able to convert this, all these MBD molecules to the QC systems. Also, energy storage. We need to be able to produce systems that can be um, 
storage energy up to one megajoule per kilogram, also heat release. It means like a, if we play with the stability of this molecule, we need to be able to go back here and release the heat and also uh, the storage time. And finally, stability and ability. The stability is because these systems are uh, cycle systems, so that uh, a conversion to MVD to QC and QC to MVD should be uh, stable. So we can do it like a, a, for a few cycles. And availability is how is the easiest or the, how is the process of synthesis of this kind of molecules. We need to find like a, 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 a chemical strategies to get an easiest way, an economical way, uh, this kind of systems. So now I'm gonna present those, those research goals. The first one is try to find the absor molecules with good absorption uh, Onset, I mean like a, a, the molecules that can absorb in the solar uh, spectra, especially uh, around 600 nanometers, but we, can, we are like, a, in realistic way, we are trying to work around 400 nanometers because uh, in that point, we have like a high intensity of emission of solar light. Uh, the second um, research goal is try to keep low molecular weight, because this parameter is related with uh, energy density. If we have molecules with low molecular weight, we can get high energy density. And finally, try to keep high uh, storage time of the isomer. For the first research goal, uh, we decide to try to synthesize this kind of molecule with donor receptor system. So uh, the idea is to, uh, we synthesize like a small library of molecules with viral function and changing the uh, functional groups around this uh, final group and to observe how is the um, solar match spectra of this kind of, of system. We observe like a, when we have like a strong donating group with a receptor group, uh, like a really red shift absorption uh, uh, of solar light around 160 nanometers. So one of these uh, research goals was uh, uh, improved. We also got a, like a high photo conversion efficiency. It means like a 75% of quantum yield of photoisomerization from MVD to QC. But we still had problems with the energy storage density and stability of photo photoisomer. Keeping this idea to use system with donor receptor, uh, we synthesize molecules like this system. We, we kept like a cyanide group, like a good acceptor group, a chemical functional group, linked with triple bonds and dimethylamine. This is a good example of, a good, of good absorption light around 456 nanometers with high energy density and good storage half time. But for our purpose, it's not ideally good half time. But in this point, we use this molecule to devise a, a microchip to test how is the tra a transference of a energy a, from the sunlight to the water. Uh, we this, uh, did like a consummate microchip uh, with, we flow the molecule in like a, in like a silica tube in contact with uh, water, water around like a quartz uh, tubing. And we observed like a, a, the 1.1% 1 .1 of uh, energy uh, absorption or energy uh, conversion of the solar light, and all this system, uh, including storage energy and heat of uh, heating water, around 80% of efficiency. Also, we test the cyclability of this process. We did it like up to 100 times, and we observed that, that, that this process is 80% efficient in those all those cycles. So. This is a good point for this kind of systems. But what about with half time? With half time, we kept 
uh, the idea to uh, work with the cyanide group as a receptor group, but we decided to functionalize the RE group here with different kind of uh, substituents about uh, related, changing the electronic nature of the substituent, like electro withdrawing groups, donating groups, and also the position al around the ring. In this, with this library of compounds, we uh, observed like a good high density of energy storage. He, we kept a, a photo, quantum yield of conversion to MBD to QC, but also we improved the half time. We got the hours, days, months, and years. This is like a good example. We, we, can, we are able to store between six and uh, 70 years of energy. But we are interested to understand why, the, especially these molecules, have like a really high, uh, high half time of, of storage or stability. Calcul computational calculations of one, this molecule show like, a, um, show like a, a, these molecules really strain, doesn't have like a free rotation, and the energy barrier here is really high. So this is like a explanation like a, we have to improve this half time. So in this point, some of research goals are uh, really well studied, but what is the next step? The next step is try to do like a real device. So the real device is like a cycle system that started with solar collector. This is like a, the first prototype of solar collector. It's developed in 2016. We flow the MBD molecules to transfer from MBD to QC, we have like a storage reservoir. And when we need heat, we, can, we are able to pump the solution of this QC molecule through a catalyst. And this catalyst uh, transform again to QC to MBD, and also we have like a releasing of heat. It's, this heat can be used as a domestic heating. So uh, in this point, we have like a solar collector, but we need to find like a, this kind of, we have like a reservoir, because we have molecules we can modulate half time from hours, days, years. But we need to find like a, the proper catalyst to transform again that QC to MBD and release heat. Uh, for these studies, we consummate this device uh, where we can pump uh, the QC molecule through the catalyst and get back the MBD, and we can control the difference of temperature at the beginning and the end of this process. We choose this molecule. We call it the supermost molecule because it's like a well-balanced molecule with different properties, like a low molecular weight, really good uh, energy density, half time of 30 days, good time, and good quantum yield of conversion. In that point, we got like a difference of temperature around 63 degrees. It means like an absolute temperature according like almost for uh, 85 uh, degrees. And we observed like a, the, the, um, this difference, uh, difference of temperature depending with the concentration of the solution like uh, we pump through the system. Uh, the maximum uh, Concentration like we can afford is almost 1.5 molar. We can, uh, we can do more than that because we are limited by solubility. It means like a higher solubility or higher concentration, the catalyst can be dissolved in the, in the, in the flow system. Yes. So we are working now uh, to find like a really good catalyst supporting it like a material. So with a, we can be a stuck in this in this uh, tubing system, and we can reach higher concentration and also uh, have like a higher temperature. But uh, other parameter is important is try to go to synthesize those molecules. We know we know how to do it, but how to process to do from lab to large scale because we need to work with a uh, kilograms or. Uh, grams to kilogram of this molecule to do like a real device. In our lab, there are two pathways to synthesize this molecule, starting from a commercial MBD, 
And we used like a co Suzuki coupling stepwise, include using pyrpalagium catalyst to get this kind of molecules. But we have other simple methods, this first step of reaction is starting with commercial available acetophenones. In three and four step, we can get this MVD. The key reaction of this step is diazalder reaction. Uh, those previous steps, we can do it like uh, without purification. And it's like a really uh, cheap, low cost, uh, stepwise of, of synthesis of MVD. And it's metallic catalyst free synthesis. So thinking about producing in large scale is like a good uh, point as I start to work on that. But also, we want to translate this chemistry from batch. So we are using a commonly used like a bolon flask to synthesize our compounds, but to get like a large scale is a good idea to translate it in flow. It means like a, a start, we can pump reagents through the tubing, mix the compounds, and the end of the tube, we can get the product. This protocol or this method has like a, some advantage, like a, we can enhance heating, mixing, and mass transfer, and precise control of uh, parameters like a flow, temperature, and we can reduce time of reaction. So this is like a, one example of like a consummate flow a system, but in our lab we have like a two a flow equipment with two different brands, and now we are working on the synthesis of semi-automated flow synthesis of MVD compounds, and we hope get almost 30 grams of this compound in continuous flow synthesis. Uh, if we can get it, we can have we can say like a, this process is like a cost-effective method of synthesis of MVD compounds. And now we will be able to synthesize like, or to do like a real device or test these molecules in a real device for a, a domestic heating. In summary, uh, according with some parameters or this approach of heat storage, uh, we observed like a MVD molecules can storage energy if it's conjugated with the cis donor receptor system. This is like a one example that I didn't show before. This is like a double system, uh, but it has, it has the same concept that I showed before. Uh, we improve the half time of the storage system by changing the functional groups and the position in the aerial system, uh, almost 100 times of improvement. Uh, this we can devise or synthesize like this. We did like a, the first prototype in microchip to observe the storage energy and heat release with a 1.1 percent of a, 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 a efficiency. And all this system, including a storage and releasing heat, is like almost 80 percent. Cyclability around 100 uh, cycles. And finally, we are able to, uh, we found like uh, the right catalyst or like uh, some initial catalyst to uh, do the conversion of the QC to MVD systems with heat releasing. Uh, we now have like a record of a gradient around 63% and now the design of a device is now still ongoing. Thank you for your kind attention. Also, I want to thank to the funding. Uh, the funding. This is our research group, the head of the department, uh, the, the, of the group, uh, Casper. Uh, we are. This is the members that we are st working now in this project. And also, really, really thanks to the all PhD, uh, postdoc, previous postdoc were, that were working in this project. And all these uh, few years, we can get like a really nice result. Thank you so much. We have some questions. It's really a chemistry approach. So. Uh, I have two questions. Yeah. Uh, very some basic ones. Uh, so I was curious, uh, like, is there a natural system that in nature that imitates this process, like outside of? Uh, and then, second, uh, like, if you were to use, just use a solar concentrator to uh, store the energy in just water, for example, and then use release that later. Or how, what is the efficiency? What, what would you expect the efficiency of that process to be? Okay, the first one is like a 
like a natural process from a sunlight to get like an energy reaction and produ uh, produce like a reaction and energy photosynthesis. So, but it heat. No, I don't. I don't. This is like a, this is why it's one of the new approach because it's, there are like a ATP or those kind of energy uh, system. There are some, so like some, some I think trees, I can't remember, might be like the, some type of beta carotene tree that will, that will do this conformational change because it's measuring how much sunlight it's getting via the heat, it'll heat up and then it can actively do some processing. So I think if you look at the beta carotene that's in trees, I think they do when it should be like a photo switch, I guess. Um, for the second question, uh, can you repeat this so again? Uh, I was just wondering if you store uh, sunlight in water, in a water tank, insulated water tank, and then mm. release it later, what, what is the efficiency of that process? Uh, that but we are in storage uh, uh, heat in, in water. We are, just, uh, we are converting one molecule to other molecule in that point. So after that, we flow that molecule to the, through the catalyst, and in that way, we release heat. So that heat is exchanged. We use like exchangers, so to heat water and then go directly to the home, to the house. Uh, in that, if we, reserve, we use those reservoirs with that molecule, we don't have problems because uh, it's just dependent on the stability of the molecule. So for example, if we have if we want to storage like uh, for one month, we can, well now we are able to, see which one is like for one month or years or hours, depending on the, apl of the application. So, but uh, we are just like a heating is the molecule uh, to transform, to do like a chemical reaction. So. Uh, just have to comment, you know, as you mentioned, in photosynthesis, it's not the heat that being stored, it's energy from other splitting based on our prospect. And one question, uh, in your system, your molecular storage, do you need light to store or you need heat to store? No, light. So you need photons? Yes, so photons. Do you know how many photons per molecule you need? Because you said 80%? No, it, it, for, the, for this, pro yes. Uh, for this process, uh, we, is. It's dependent of the coefficient of absorption of the molecule. So we want two molecules that can absorb in the um, an special wavelength of the solar much of the solar window of emission. Yes, but we don't. It doesn't depend of the of the photons. Depend of the absorption coefficient of absorption of the molecules. So it's, a, it's a, like a molecular way. How many? Molecules can go from the single state to the trans to the excited state. So uh, we want to move to like a red shifted because in that point we have like a, a more a, a, the window of the solar is, uh, solar spectra is like a higher higher, higher intensity. But I don't know exactly how many photons has in that in that sol in solar window. I don't. Uh, um, so on this question, I mean, it seems like you're confined to a narrow, high um, energy, low wavelength photon range. Why? And you also considered, I, I think this is like really interesting to absorb it in the, the photoisomer, but there are lots of other, I think, uh, molecules that will absorb like iodine, that will dissociate, so you just get iodine atoms, and then you can react those with some kind of alkene or something to create an iodoalkane and then store the charge that way. And iodine dissociates at 500 nanometers. So it's, it's wider, but I understand the principle behind doing this, but have you guys looked at if you're mainly trying to do sunlight to chemical storage? Have you looked at that as well? But you mean like we can use other kind of chemical functions just to de do the but dissociation of that bond, yes? Yeah, so more than one molecule. You also looked at that, because it seems like the rest of your system could also function. But what about reversing one system? Because the approach is to that. Try to do like a different cycle so it's sustainable. 
if we if we do the day association, we have we need to be able to again go back to the same molecule, so we can reuse that. So uh, this is why we are using photo switch. This photo switch. So I wonder you mentioned this uh, cyclopentane is a hundred cycles. I wonder if that have to have to do with uh, water sol solvent because if you use other solvent, maybe that that less corrosive. Uh, we are using other solvent. The so the point is like how we have two materials. So one in one is going flow, uh, flowing, for example, with, with chlorobenzene to the mole our molecules, and in other one is just in contact with other material with water. I see. So it's, yes. It's not solvent. No, no, it's not in water. So, so the decomposition is actually intrinsic. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Justin.